ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mission Space here at Epcot. My name is Dennis Marsico. I'll be your host for today's question and answer session with our great astronauts who just returned from space. I'm sure many of you have some great questions for our brave men and women. I'm going to ask that when you do have a question, when the time comes, please raise your hand high in the air. I'm going to come out and, and come to you. I'm going to leave this aisle clear just a little bit, just so I can come out and answer all those questions, okay? I think all of you will agree that it's rare in a lifetime to be one astronaut, but to have all seven of them here at once from the space shuttle is completely special, to say the least. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please help me welcome the crew of the STS-118, Commander Scott Kelly, pilot, Kelly Hobart, and mission specialist Tracy Cardwell, Rick Distraccio, David Williams, Barbara Morgan, and Albert Drew Jr. Thank you for being here, all of you. And uh, Commander, we did this earlier. I just wanted to uh, let you take it off. Why don't you tell uh, everyone a little bit about the mission, and then we're going to take some questions. Well, uh, thank you all for coming out here today and uh, to enjoy the uh, Magic Kingdom and ride the mission space here. We were on it earlier today, and it's really a great ride. For those of you that haven't been on it, I'd like to encourage you to do it. It's uh, really a lot of fun. Somewhat close to launching on the go space show. Uh, and we just got back from our, our mission, it's called SPS 118. Uh, we landed a couple of weeks ago, it was a flight to the International Space Station. It was what's called the uh, assembly mission, which means we we're bringing up components of the space station to make the uh, space station uh, bigger and better than it is uh, or was before we flew. Uh, we were also the first flight of what's called the Educator Astronaut Program, and uh, uh, that's why we have an educator actually on Barbara Morgan on the flight with us. Um, again, it's really a pleasure to be here today, and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. All right, I'm going to come out, and uh, we'll start right here. Actually, we'll be right in front, and I'll be out in the audience today this morning. And uh, questions? Yeah, it's kind of a two-part question. Um, after all your training, the exhilaration you felt when you finally got to go for launch, and considering the other uh, missions that have failed, your anxiety and re-entry considering the uh, trouble with your spacecraft. You know, we, what the gentleman's referring to is we did have some damage on the uh, bottom of the orbiter that would do a piece of foam that hit it and put a small hole in the tile. And uh, there was a lot of analysis and testing that went into clearing the shuttle for re-entry. Uh, we had all that information on board and, uh, you know, based on the analysis and how hot the uh, aluminum structure would get underneath that tile. We were very, very comfortable with the decision not to repair it. That's the decision we would have made had, had it been strictly air decision. So we supported that 100%. And NASA took the appropriate amount of time to come to the conclusion that it was maybe, uh, although we could have fixed it, probably a little bit too much risk to fix it if uh, the fix wasn't warranted. Okay. All right. Uh, I got Jim right here. Jim, uh, go ahead. Ask a question. Hello, my name is Jim, and my question is for Mrs. Morgan. How was it to be the first teacher in space? How was it to be the first teacher in space? Who's question? Well, not the first teacher in space. <laughs> um, Crystal McCullough was his mom until we got our first teacher in space, and I just went the next, and about three more in training now, and we'll have more after that. Right. I have our lead here. Okay, go ahead, your question. My name is Arlene. I'd like to know what experiments are ongoing on the space station now. Hey, Dave. Yeah, there's a wide range of experiments that we're currently doing on the space station. The majority of these are focusing on how the human body adapts to being in microgravity. Of course, the goal is to try and understand all the changes that take place in our body to help us be able to go back to the moon and looking forward to those missions on to Mars, which could take up to three years by the time we go. And We'll work on the Martian surface and come back to Earth. Okay, we got Jeff here. I'm sorry, Jeff, go ahead. I have a two part question uh, to kind of elaborate on the uh, question regarding the TPS damage. Can you elaborate on the testing that was done to make a determination that repair was not needed? And also elaborate on the risks involved should you have to have gone out to do the repair? Well, the uh, 
I guess I'll answer the first part, and then I'll have a brief answer to the second part about the risks of doing a repair. The, uh, the testing that was done was uh, mostly two parts. One was called the computational fluid dynamics, or CFD, where a computer model can determine the temperatures at which the uh, aluminum structure below the tile would, would get to, how hot it would get. Um, the other part was what's called an arc jet testing, where they take a tile, they damage it, they put it in this furnace with a very high temperature uh, flame on the tile, and they measure, uh, they try to model the, the temperature environment that that tile would see on re-entry in the arc jet. And both of those, uh, the CFD and the, the arc jet, kind of basically came to the same conclusion that the aluminum structure below the tile that normally gets to 300 degrees would actually get to 340 or 350 degrees. And at that temperature, there really is no risk to damaging that aluminum structure. Aluminum melts at the, a temperature of over 1,000 degrees. So there was really, a, I wouldn't say zero concern that there would be no issue, but it was pretty, pretty much close to uh, the zero that there was uh, any increased risk to the shuttle damaging the shell or danger the crew and crew loss answer the second part. Yeah, as far as repairing the shell, and we did four space blocks as uh, part of the normal mission. If we had to go out and repair the space shuttle, we were trained to do that. We had all the tools on board, we had all the materials on board. Tracy and, and uh, Scott would have directed us from inside the space shuttle while Dave Williams and myself went out and did the actual repairs. The risk is that when you're out there very close to the underbelly of the space shuttle, it's a very uh, sensitive area that you can poke other holes into it. So there's always a risk that you can do more damage than good if they want to fix a tile up on your roof. You bring a big hammer up there, you drop that hammer, you break three other tiles. So you don't want to do more damage, obviously. We could have done the repair, we were ready to do the repair, but we preferred not to. And that's uh, after the analysis, they determined it's great to come in for a No problems. All right, I have Jackson here. He's right here in the center of the point here. He's six years old. He wants to be an astronaut and has a pretty cool question. Jackson, go ahead. When did you guys start training? When did you start training? Anyone want to take that? Start you on the answer? Sure. Yeah, uh, actually, when we, when we sign up to become astronauts, we start training from that very moment. So at that, in that case, for me, it was 11 years from the time I started flying as an astronaut, or started training as an astronaut, the second time I flew. The first time was, uh, was probably close to five years. So what we do is when we start our initial training, we go through a whole uh, training syllabus to teach us all about the shuttle and all the different kind of operations we do, whether it's just how, how it's supposed to work, uh, if everything's running fine, but how each system uh, can be fixed if something breaks, and then how it all fits together. It's a very, very redundant system, and because of that, it's very complex, so it takes a long time. The initial training was about a year for you to just go through everything in the shuttle the first time. Then there's training to learn the space station. Then there's things you need to learn about spacewalk. Things you learn about robotics operations, about experiments and other things. So by the time uh, you've gone through all that initial training, you just keep working at all the different uh, aspects of, of flying in space. You get assigned to a flight, and then once you get assigned to a flight, that's usually about a year in advance uh, from the time you get picked as a crew to learn everything you need to know to go up and actually fly. 